Hi again, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the first video in Module 5. This module focuses on apprenticeship workplace learning. Once again, the analysis questions will start us off and we'll finish with the synthesis questions. In between, we'll look at situation cognition, vocational training, internship, and of course, apprenticeships. There are two analysis questions I'd like you to focus on. Think of who may be a likely candidate for an apprenticeship. What are their attributes? What do the demographics look like? Next, I want you to think about the experience of an expert guiding you. You may have attempted to repair your car or fix something around the house or even redecorate. How would your experience have been different if you'd had an expert to guide you? According to Hansman, learning is inherently social in nature. Situated cognition is the nature of interactions amongst learners. The tools they use within these interactions, the activity itself, and the social context in which the activity takes place. All this shapes learning. She goes on to say that situated cognition emphasizes interaction between the learner and other learners and tools as a social cultural context. You must remember though that situated cognition is different from experiential learning, which emphasizes learning through doing or experience. Vocational training is linked to apprenticeship training. Typically in vocational training, the learner is in school full time learning in class from skilled teachers. Polytex and other college programs in Canada are considered vocational training. Vocational training is also known as VET. It has a long and distinguished tradition, particularly in Europe. This quote sums up the skills that apprentices and vocational training brings to the labor market. Traditionally, apprenticeships can be traced back to about the year 2000 BCE. Sometimes the skills are passed along in the family, usually father to son and mother to daughter. Sometimes a young person, perhaps is about 10 years old, would enter into a contract to be an apprentice for a number of years. The master would provide room and food, as well as teach the young person how to eventually become a master. Apprenticeships have evolved today and combine classroom theory with hands-on practice. Additionally, the master is no longer a person, but an organization or company. And of course, 10 year olds need not apply. Apprenticeships usually involve the trades or craft people. A licensed professional ultimately supervises an apprentice and some apprenticeships may take years to complete. Interns though are different. The intern period is much shorter and may be part of vocational training program and is often considered a white collar or professional career. Apprenticeship is a form of post-secondary training that teaches the skills and competencies necessary to perform tasks to an industry standard. Apprenticeship training provides the opportunity for hands-on learning under the direction of a certified journey person with the ability to earn while you learn. The training combines alternative periods of on the job, which is about 80 to 90% of the time, and technical training, which is about 10 to 20% of the time. Technical training can occur at a college, a union center, or a private tutor, or online. The Red Seal program has 55 designated trades. The trades are governed by regulations under the Provincial Territorial Apprenticeship Acts. The regulations outline the administrative procedures and in some cases the standards and conditions of training for specific trades, including the curriculum, accreditation, and certification. Once the apprentice has completed the required hours and or modules for the trade, the apprentice can write the exam for the certification of qualification, known as the C of Q. In most trades, the exam is a multiple choice test and apprentices must earn 70% or more to pass. Through the programs, tradespersons obtain endorsement on their provincial or territorial certificates by successfully completing an interprovincial exam, making it easier for apprentices to move between provinces or territories and employers. 
This 2014 poster from the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program illustrates a wide variety of apprenticeships available today. Many are Red Seal programs, as seen by the Maple Leaf, and many are also dual apprenticeships offered through colleges and some universities in Ontario. A cognitive apprentice attends school and learns not just a trade, but also a wide variety of transferable skills and encourages learners to reflect on the elements that are common across the tasks and skill sets. In this graphic, we can see how Hansman visualizes the cognitive apprenticeship approach. These phases or steps begin with modeling as the base and then support learners as they progress toward becoming self-directed. With each step, the apprentice builds skills, confidence, and competence. Other cognitive apprenticeship models emphasize the teaching and learning process through modeling, articulation, exploration, reflection, scaffolding, and coaching. In your readings, you may find other models or theories about cognitive apprenticeships. All models and theories will include at least one of these attributes. This video has looked at apprenticeships from a few angles, but really hasn't explored how they are implemented. What are some of the problems you may encounter if you were implementing apprenticeship training in your place of work? How do you think using the apprenticeship model in your place of work would change your organization? As you read and learn more about apprenticeships, remember that the use of apprenticeships vary by country. For example, the United Kingdom and Germany use this model much more than Canada does. Now that you have a better understanding of apprenticeships, start to think how organizations can use this approach in other areas of workplace learning. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.